Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. I am Virendra, and here we have Navin who can answer your question and Vishal. Uh, like uh, Vishal and Navin, over to you. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, hi. Virendra. Hey, hi, Virendra. Thank you. Hi, Vishal. Nice to meet you as well. Hi, Navin. Nice to meet you as well. Okay, so in this uh session we'll just uh it's a ama session like you can ask any questions that you have doubts or queries that you want to clarify any topic as such so feel free to um, ask a question and we try to answer in the best way possible okay uh I mean, while the participants drop in their question, I had one question that we can maybe discuss. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud has got capabilities of like doing dev work, uh, writing complex SQL queries, API, and basically any complex data processing can be done in Marketing Cloud. But uh, when when a client comes to us with some requirements and like there is a, a requirement of like a heavy data processing or data massaging, then what is it that, so like you, then you have two options, either you do the data processing outside marketing cloud, like in your data warehouse or your other backend systems, or you bring raw data into marketing cloud and then use SQL APIs and other stuff to do that within marketing cloud. So what is it that you generally recommend like which of the data processing should be done outside marketing cloud and what is it that can be done inside from a marketing cloud performance perspective? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question, actually. So, uh, so yeah, in general, um, if you want to uh, do it inside marketing cloud, we all know that that, that is an issue, right, where uh, we, we have to deal with uh, this query timeout uh, issue that is due to Marketing Cloud has its own shared resources and it has to run across in different instance. So they they keep uh, the performance limit uh, um, uh, in order to have a performance uh, increase the, so that query keeps in the timeout of 30 minutes. So so uh, so now we have to understand, OK, so why this timeout is happening, right? So so this timeout is happening because either you 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 your data model is itself is so complex right you have like uh, many into uh, inbuilt relationship with one object to another or one table to another in that case uh, you have to do a lot of joints and uh, that could result in a timeout then the other other thing could also be that you have like a big chunk of data like 100 millions of record and 150 millions of record in that case yeah obviously uh, due to the record size itself it, it will get timeout because when the query uh, if you consider other um, systems like redshift and uh, those systems they they have their own database and they can run hours uh, like two hours three hours to get the query to be completed so I would say just in order to put short, like if you have a lot of data massaging and you are complex, you have your data model is so complex, then you handle that outside of marketing cloud. It can be any uh, ETL system like Redshift and uh, Athena and uh, stuff like that. Or uh, let's say your model is so uh, minimalistic, you gonna deal with like lead, contact, object, account, uh, and you don't deal with a lot of data then I think uh, inside marketing cloud should do. Uh, does that answer your question or Vishal? Yes, yes, Naveen, that, that perfectly makes sense. I think I, I'm aligned with that as with that approach. So yeah, if, if the processing data processing that is required is too complex, then it is better suited that is done outside marketing cloud in your cloud uh, computing resources or in your e data warehouse and yeah. that is where and you bring in the process data in marketing cloud so that is easier for marketing cloud to manage that data right right exactly so i mean it's marketing cloud is good at marketing so uh, not on the etl sprint so yeah if you if you keep it 
the complexity away out of marketing cloud and just bringing the data whichever we need or marketable data you know so th then yeah you, that would be the easier approach perfect perfect great uh do you have any guys question Mm, or you want to clarify any other topic feel free to bring into a chat and we can definitely discuss about it Okay, um, Naveen, maybe another question I can I can think of or I want to discuss mm -hmm. while we get yeah, sure. more questions from the other participants. So this one is more about uh, data management in terms of data retention and you know managing historical data. So uh, using APIs and using other forms of data imports, you ingest data into marketing cloud and you use that data for sending out emails or for all your uh, journeys. So in your experience generally, like how much data retention or what is your general recommendation in terms of storing historical data in marketing clouds? Because as again, the previous question we discussed, like yeah. we need to ensure that marketing cloud is meant, is used more for marketing stuff and not as a data processing tool. So what's your general recommendation or advice on managing historical data or what is the general typical data retention policies or advice you give to your clients yeah so uh, yeah that's again a good question like uh, so so in this case uh, let's say if a client is dealing with like uh, per day you get like uh, uh, 30 300k or 400k records uh, comes into your data extension right so uh, so the retention thing can um, uh, depends upon the number of data gets inserted into a data extension. For instance, you, you can start with small, right? And you can go bigger. For example, you can keep a retention setting of seven days and then you can go bigger, but it's not the other way around. Like you keep the retention setting of like 30 days and then you cannot go further down the line. You, you can, you can just go more, but you cannot just shorten it out. So uh, so else you need to create a new data extension and keep it uh, in that way, right? So I would say uh, if 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 a particular record, let's say we are talking about uh, transaction records are coming into a marketing cloud and depending upon the transaction details, you combine with the customer data, then you try to uh, create a journey, right? So in this case, uh, if, if the use case demands like, okay, I only last two weeks of record C uh, and sum it up up to, thousand dollar if it's thousand dollar then send send this promotional email if not thousand dollar then don't send it so things like that then i would suggest you uh you keep as much as that right so 14 days because this transaction data a lot of data keeps coming in and it will again involve in the time out uh things and stuff so uh so i would i would recommend between 7 to 14 uh, is the period and obviously you can extend if you wanted to uh, yeah, for the data which you are going to be in a short term use but obviously for the data uh, like customer related information those will be staying there forever so in that case you can just keep that data so uh, that will not do any harm and obviously you need to target those customers so yeah, so that would be my recommendation. Uh, if you don't need a data, uh, then just stick between 7 to 14 until the use case demands more. Um, but then if you want to have certain types of data like customer related, asset related data, you, you if pro or product catalog related. So you, you, you can just keep it and yeah, you have to live with that. So yeah, does that answer, Visha? Yes, yes, Navin, definitely that answers the question. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, let me ask the question like, which is your feature which you like 
one feature that you like in marketing cloud um, uh, and you think it's 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 really good uh you mean with respect to uh development apis and this thing or or in general across yeah all the in features? general across all the features like this feature i really like a lot you know so and this this really uh, expands the scope of what we can do it in marketing cloud or anything which you like it right so mm -hmm. uh i would say i think journey builder is the mm -hmm feature that I like the most in marketing cloud. Like I, I would say that is the kind of holy grail or the most important, you know, thing or the campaign setup, which actually provides value. So before before journey builder, all that you do that like like you set up campaigns, you set up emails, HTMLs, all that, that is more like a preparation work, but journey builder or your L actual marketing automation programs, when you implement them using journey builder that is when you get the real value of the tool because you start seeing emails going out from the journeys you see the journeys helping you to achieve your goals helping help you to increase conversions and that is when you know you can see that oh okay this is how it is helping me in achieving uh, uplift in my conversions or or whatever other metrics that i'm looking at so uh, journey builder i would say is my favorite tool yeah, yeah. How, how about you yeah i think i think most of the people would be that right so because obviously it's a very powerful feature yeah okay. for, for for me it's a it's a journey builder but then for for me what what we are facing uh let's say in 2012 or 2013 in, in those uh those periods where like uh it, 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 it Anything you want to achieve in marketing cloud, you can only do it in marketing cloud. And if certain use case are not possible, then either the use case will just go rejected or people try to move to a different platform, right? So, so now the recent changes between the custom uh, journey builder activity or it can be custom uh, content blocks and things like that. So those really expands the scope, right? So uh, what you can able to do um, uh, inside the journey, obviously inside marketing cloud, but then it also extends the capability of you to do certain things outside uh, as well. Like it integrates in a seamless experience, right? So, um, uh, for example, certain things nowadays. You, you, you. Uh, in our last session, we were. Um, if you want to trigger a Viber message, obviously we will say oh, marketing cloud is not the tool. Uh, in some years back right but then now you have the possibility of using custom activity and then you can integrate that with uh, um, uh, the custom activity and then uh, to trigger a api via uh, uh, viber message right so so these type of possibility of extending uh really nowadays becoming more popular and getting popular and popular so uh, yeah, that is something I really uh, like about apart from the features which we have it in uh, marketing cloud. Okay, okay, great. Yep, uh, I think I think our audience are good. Like they don't have any other questions. Seems like. Okay, Navin, do you mind if I go ahead with one more sure, question? Sure. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. I'm okay. always open. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, my next question is around like, so recently I came across a requirement wherein the client, they, like they had a marketing cloud implementation, but it wasn't a, a big scale project or like that had a big budget it was like a low budget implementation project and they wanted to build dashboards uh based on the data that was present in marketing cloud like the data in data extensions or data from their journey so something like like you have data studio google data studio which is now looker studio so they wanted to somehow you know uh figure out how they can send their data from marketing cloud to maybe Google Sheets and mm -hmm. then use that to uh, you know build their dashboards either using Looker Studio or maybe using some charts and all those things in Google Sheet itself, which is like a simpler dashboard. Like I, I, I know that there are some third party tools or connectors available which allow you to connect 
your marketing cloud data with directly with the dashboarding tools but i think most of them are paid or they have some limitations so right any any experience around building dashboards or exporting data from marketing cloud to maybe a google sheet and then building dashboard on top of that yeah yeah that's a good question i can even share my screen and i can show it to you um okay so i will just first show this is something i have already built uh so let me just take you over there Uh, so yeah, by the way, uh, this is uh, my blog. So uh, in which I write certain things, uh, if if it's something interesting for me, right? And then uh, yeah, I I try to post it out so that uh, if 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 I come across any interesting use case. So in this case, right? So what I'm trying to do is like I'm trying to fetch all the data of marketing cloud into Google Sheet. So uh, so he, in this case, I'm using SSDs. I'll just come back to the thing. But then I'll just show you a quick thing. So for example, um, here is what my client ID, which is uh, MID, right? And you have, so this is like a journey builder. So you have this uh, 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 customer key is nothing but this uh, a trigger send external key, right? And what is your name of the journey builder? And uh, um, the trigger send definition key. And lastly, when that, when it has been sent and how many it has been sent bounds total. So in this case, it's a, it's just a POC type. So uh, that's why the send count is 3 and 16. But uh, 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 but to explain the uh, basic thing, right? So uh, basically, you, you need to create a cloud page, right? So in that cloud page uh, uh, should act as a, a parameter to get, basically. So uh, if, if in the Google Sheet row, so it's all about in the Google Sheet, right? So in the Google Sheet, so each row, I'm taking as a one particular journey. So in this case, I have like 10 journeys. So I can I can show the 10 metrics of the journey in 10 rows, right? So that's my idea. So while entering in the row, what I will do is like, I will enter my cloud page link, something like this. So um, this is my sample URL, uh, which is the cloud page link, right? So till here, it's my cloud page link. And I have to pass my uh, external key, which is uh, journey builder external key, which is this one. And I have you have to pass get the metrics of all. So once you pass this right, so it, it, Google Sheet is calling the cloud page, and in the cloud page, I'm I'm getting the uh, uh, TS key, which is like uh, trigger send key, and the metric is all. So if the parametric metric is all, then what I'm trying to do is like I'm there is a SSJS function like uh, tracking dot retrieve. And it helps, it, it's basically a wrapper of SOAP API, right? So which can able to retrieve uh, the things. And then I'm stringifying it and then uh, I'm outputting that. So if, if there is no output, then I will just say zero, zero. But this output is what it will get captured in the, uh, it, it will go, it, it is what it will get captured in the import JSON script. So there is a um, script uh, which is like, uh, uh, uh which you can just uh which is a app script you can write in the google sheet uh so when you when you in the google sheet you have to just import json and then example.com test right so and then you have to click on the header so so once you do this what happens is like uh it just brings in all your data so this is one easy way uh wherein you can just uh, get the metrics in the journey and the values will be in the sheet from the sheet you can able to uh, from the sheet you can able to uh, get the dashboard so this is just one time you have to do right so it's not like every time you go to google sheet you have to keep entering once you just pass in this import json function which is the app script uh, 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 this will call the marketing cloud and it will get the data back and stored in this part of sheet so this is like Marketing cloud is returning a JSON and this is this import JSON is like parsing the JSON and then putting into the rows, right? So that's what it does. So so next time when you open uh, open after seven days or three days, right? So when you open automatically, this fields are filled in and it automatically populates and it can also create your dashboard directly in the Google Sheet. So yeah, this is something very uh, easy to do, and then yeah, very interesting as well. So for me, mm, 
okay got it so basically you've used cloud page to expose the data outside marketing cloud and right. then that cloud page is being called inside the google sheet wherein yeah. you have the data and then you're free to you connect it to looker studio or build charts and everything in google sheet google sheet exactly. yeah, yeah yeah i think i think this is a sim simple straightforward approach and does not require much of a setup so yeah i think this is yeah yeah all you need is a google sheet that's it so yeah it should be fine correct correct uh, but yeah i've seen other people uh, who use tableau and uh, who use uh, aws you know so uh, over there we have like a, a quick site and uh, other uh, related dashboards uh, so we can uh, wherein uh, we send the data via data view to ftp and from ftp either our ftp or uh, data shop ftp like uh, uh, they have the athena and stuff like that so uh, we put in their ftp and they fetch the file and then um, they can they can import the data uh, by them right and then from that i've seen people create dashboards from uh, there as well so basically it would be uh, sfmc then you have like a, uh you have you can you have an ftp basically it can be like sfmc ftp or uh, mm -hmm. yeah ftp can be in the aws s3 right so uh, it can also be in s3 so uh, so the file just passes from marketing cloud to here just all the just basic uh, push all the tracking files right then then it can able to uh, push it to um uh athena so here so in athena you can able to create a view uh and the the view is nothing but based upon some sql query in that you can create your own segmentation and then uh once you have this view then you can uh you can use this uh uh quick site right so um and then yeah, that will help you to create a dashboards and stuff like that so yeah but this is something if you have some budgets and um things like that you can create a really really nice visualization of dashboards around it or or worst case you you have this uh uh intelligence reports which is inbuilt and uh, so here um uh, you can if you want to create a specific journey related dashboards you can also create a dashboards on the intelligence report based upon a specific journey so let's say i create a uh, i have this journey builder email right so um in this case uh, let's say i don't need so in this case it will show all the uh journeys uh across this particular MID. So I don't want all of this. Then um, if I don't need all of this, then I can just simply uh, select the journey which I would need. So let's say I just need this particular journey uh, to be selected and then I click on apply. Yeah, so uh, in this case, it's a very um, different journey so i can take it like yeah to date it's a very old journey but but then you can you can basically apply the filters over here right and then uh you can create your own uh widget around here and then uh yeah you can you can email them or you can create a scheduled report to you uh, with the following things uh yeah that that is something Another way inside marketing cloud not taking anywhere though. Okay, yeah. So basically, we first need to figure out a way to export data from marketing cloud to the external platform, be it Google Sheet, be it your cloud yeah. FTP, uh, either using uh, Datorama or SSJS, the script that you showed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there are a lot of ways to skin the thing. So, but but then, uh, yeah, whichever uh, is the resource which we have, right? And uh, and from there we take which is the best possible outcome you can take. Yeah, but but in marketing cloud you have a lot of way, ways to do this depending upon what we have in other places. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs>
Nice, okay. Any other question, guys, if you want to um, chat it out? Okay, uh, Naveen, maybe I can go ahead with one last question sure. from my side. So, uh, okay, this question is more like I want to understand your, your experience or how you go about working on any marketing cloud implementation, which has got a quite a high number of business units. Like there is a client and they have presence in like 20, 30, 40 different regions, different markets or different brands and you know, generally their implementation is such that whatever you implement for one website or one region, you need to replicate that across all other BUs. And the number of BUs is, is maybe quite high, maybe double digit, but a higher number. So mm -hmm. in this case, like, how do you go about working, working on such implementations wherein, you know, you can take advantage of, uh, build one and repeat multiple times like you build something for one region and then you replicate that for other other regions other BUs sort of so what is kind of your practice and how do you use maybe like I think in such a requirement such a scenario using APIs or using this uh, dev side of things can make your implementation or the replication easier sure. right yeah yeah so, yeah yeah, maybe if you can share your experience, if, if you worked on yeah. any similar project. Yeah, sure, sure. So, so, uh, so yeah, in this, um, you have like a, a parent BU, right? So, uh, any marketing cloud, you have a parent BU, then you have a child BUs, right? So, it can be BU1, uh, BU2. Right. So in this case, uh, it can be BU till X, whatever be the amount, right? So uh, so uh, what, what, uh, so generally, uh, uh, just for the audience, right? So when do we categorize uh, 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 business units, right? So it can be based upon multiple different ways. So either you can you can categorize the uh, uh, business units based upon, uh, uh, as Vishal said, it can be based upon region or country, right? So uh, it can be one. So let's say you have a product and you have product across multiple regions or country, then uh, and, and you have different marketing team working in different region and different countries and your target audience is going to be a different uh, and you want to especially target in your target languages, then it makes sense to target in that particular thing. But let's say if your market market uh, uh, its marketing team itself is sitting in one particular place and um, you have um, you have like a, um, you, you have an audience which you know which you are targeting, then it it's okay to have one business unit the current uh, the current firm which i am working have uh, the uh, sixth which has the business of about 110 countries right so in that case we didn't go for 110 different business unit because we know our target audience itself is kind of a small in some countries and big in more countries and we have our marketing team sitting in one place and they are the they know what marketing and they have per country so we we are okay with one particular business unit and then uh, uh when we say one it's not one but uh for b2c one and b2b one uh, that's another case right so uh in this case you have b2b and b2c um as a different team then it makes sense to because their journeys of b2b will be totally different than what your journeys of b2c and the the way you direct the customers to buying can be a different link than what you buy what you send the link to b2c right so that uh, that can also be a possibility on business units or it could be a possibility based upon brand like for example l'oreal l'oreal it has 
uh, different brands. Uh, uh, so uh, Mugler, Valentino and things like that. So in that case, you have to create multiple business units with uh, types of brands. Uh, or in some cases, it could be based upon the company itself. So for example, Sony or for say Toyota. So uh, you you have a multi same a parent company so sony has sony entertainment sony music and uh it, it comes under a parent company but then you 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 have these uh child companies uh, so they don't want to spend uh each each thing separate separate instance which will cost more rather than that they can just buy a business unit and then uh categorize into multiple things right so in this case to vishal's question right so let's take uh, about region where uh, most of the creatives is going to be the same but only thing is like the content or um the content related emails would be changing and things like that so in this case what we um uh we try to do is so there would be a um uh, that would be a center of excellence thing, right? So which is basically revolves in the IT where they take care of core of marketing cloud. And uh, so only they will be having the access to the parent business unit and no one else will be having the access to the parent business unit because they they set up the things and you have uh, a marketing team one, right? And you have this marketing team two uh, uh, basically here. And then you have whatever a marketing team till X, right? So, uh, so in this case, what we uh, try to do is like so that could be a possibility where uh, a marketing team needs to create a uh, needs to create a creative, right? In this case, uh, uh, either all the creatives will be shared in the parent, and it can be shared uh, as well. Or for for sake, uh, let's say there is an AM script that we are writing. So it could be based upon uh, footer, right? So uh, I want to create a footer block uh, basically. And this footer block is going to be in all my email, uh, regardless of your brand, because the company name in the footer and the unsubscribe links could be uh, uh, the same, right? So in that case, I will create a footer in AM script block uh, and then I can just put it in the shared content and then they they can just simply start using those marketing teams so so that's where we we roll out uh, we can we can just roll out more easily but but let's say if mc team wants to create a new one the mc2 wants to create a new one then it's hard for hard for uh, even hard for maintaining the process and hard for the central of excellence team to manage all those things right so uh so so that's where you should always start with the parent anything you want to put it in the common ground then then you i would say you start with the parent and just share it across the business unit that will help easier to roll out and for for certain things uh, 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 I, 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 with regards to the development effort what we try to do right so we can we can obviously so so for example there is a journey uh, that is common across um the, the okay so to give an example right so so there is a website here so this website is not common right the website is just um sorry this website is common for all the regions uh, based upon it's a multilingual website imagine in in that case so let's say if you buy a product um, um uh, let's say you want to buy a product and once you buy a product you will get a confirmation email simple as that right so in in this one you you will have a api here so the website email uh, or, or the backend will call the api and this api will always have the uh, uh, this api is nothing but your journey builder api for for example because that would be easy to handle with the filter right the reason why i'm saying else the website team needs to check which is the country and according to that they need to send it out which is maybe uh may not work so much so in this case what we do so nc country is based upon country so for example country is um singapore right so so this website will call the same api right for all the uh uh, so we the, we create a e API event for all the uh, across business unit, but in the journey we have the filter of uh, country equal to Singapore. Then it has to go to the 
uh, MC1 um, journey builder. Uh, when you create a journey itself in the uh, MC1, you have to put the filter. So then when you have the, uh, when, when you would like to create a, a filter uh, with the MC2, then you, you create a filter of India, right? So uh, in the journey builder of creating MC2. So like this, you can, you can able to uh, manage easily. It's just a single API call they, they will make. And then uh, based upon countries, um, you, you define your journey requirements, right? So that, that something is also uh, possible. And lastly, you can use this, our deployment manager. So if you want to create a data extension, obviously everything should be in a shared data extension because all of the things will be consumed in the shared. But uh, for certain things like, uh, uh, let's say you want to roll out email templates across multiple uh, things, or you want to roll out emails across multiple things, then I would say you, there are nowadays uh, um, Salesforce is concentrating on the deployment manager. So you can just uh, package the export and then import back into um, the marketing cloud. So that would be uh, the way I would say. Um, yeah, I used that makes sense Vishal or do you have anything to throw inputs over here uh yeah uh Naveen I think uh the approach you mentioned kind of uh makes sense and that is something uh, that I have I also generally use uh but apart from this I have uh used one other tool which is called Accenture Dev Tools mm -hmm. so yeah. uh I, I'm not sure if you have used this tool before, but I attended one of such Trailblazer community events and uh, the Accenture team spoke about this tool that they have made it open source yeah. and it can be used with Visual Studio and using some command line uh, options. You can replicate your uh, assets from one business unit to others. So. Yeah, that is something that can help make the, you know, deployment of your assets, your data extensions, journeys, and multiple other tools. So it is kind of similar to package manager feature in Marketing Cloud, but it has got some slight differences. And I think this was rolled out like when package Before, manager was yeah. in was in initial stage where it had some limited capabilities. It wasn't able to migrate, you know, all all the different type of assets or content and so on so this is something that i have used it's simple like you search uh, accenture dev tools on google and the first link on the github shows up so if anybody is interested they can check that out yeah yeah i do agree like uh, that came uh way before or it was on the initial state of deployment manager but 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 yeah it, it works with the uh, Visual Studio Code and the command line prompt. So, uh, yeah, uh, that helps you to migrate. Yeah, that is also one good point, like wherein you can able to migrate the tools very quickly uh, or the components very quickly. Yeah. Correct. Um, hi, Vishal and Naveen. I do have one general question. Like, uh, for suppose there is a client where we implemented sales cloud plus marketing cl uh, marketing cloud kind of thing and the client come up with this kind of question like hey Viru, i just want to see like what are the benefits that i get because i'm using the marketing cloud like how many opportunities that are closed one because i'm using like like the leads that are come because i am using the marketing cloud like he just want to see the benefits and the fruits of the marketing cloud how I can build a dashboard for that? Yeah, that's a great question. So you you are saying like, uh, um, so let's say I have a lead and yeah. you, you you send an uh, email or SMS or push uh, via marketing cloud and uh, um, how the lead gets converted into opportunity and uh, how much marketing cloud made an influence on yeah. their visit on their business how the marketing cloud has been impacted the business because they are using the product hmm. yeah makes sense so um i can just explain um just real quick right so um so um 
generally we have to uh, in in terms of, so there are b2b and b2c right so uh, so imagine that you have marketing cloud right and uh, uh, and you are sending out an um, email basically right uh, yeah. so uh, and in and so i'll talk first about the retail uh, in industry right so uh, or b2c uh, customers so let's say i have like 10 million customers okay so uh, who who are already existing customers and um, what i will do is like i'm i i'm into this um, uh, car rental uh, business uh, right so uh, like rent a car okay. uh, you you just um, uh, you so you you just need to rent a car and i make profit on that so that's where uh, 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 right now i'm working on so so let's say you have 10 million customers right so then you send out an email to um, let's say um, you are qualified customers is about 1 million okay out of those so i don't need to target i don't need to i, I always target 10 million customers uh, i have certain segments which are like uh, mm, i want to target the customers only in us and um uh, who are opted in and things like that right so the, my target customer is now 1 million so uh, out of those 1 million right so how many of them opens right and then um how many of them clicks basically so uh in this case, let's say uh, we are talking about 40% uh, uh, of um, open rate here, which is uh, 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 which is a very good uh, open rate. So in this case, uh, the um, 1 million will come under the 400k customers. Okay. So now um, we are in out of this 1 million, uh, uh, I, I think at least um, 10 10 percent of the people are clicking so uh in this case it can be like 100k right so 100k from the email they clicked it so then you have your reservation right so when you when you make when you want to rent a car or rent, when you want to book a flight you will create a reservation basically so here out of those 10 uh 100k customers again um 10% of them only make make into the funnel basically so imagine this is like a funnel then 10k customers have made a reservation so now uh, how much of uh, how how much you have spent right so our, for this 1 million customer right so to send out an email so for 1 million customer you are spending like uh, 1000 1000 email is like what 0 0.08 euros uh, something right uh, uh, in this case thousand let's say thousand um emails is like 0 0.08 euros so in this case one one million is like um uh point eight uh eight eighty euros basically not nothing much right so uh uh so so let's say you you get you you spent around 80 euros but then the booking which you have made is like you are making 10 10 k customers to make so you 80 euros or 800 euros i'm i'm not sure i i need to do a math but but then uh even though we are talking about 10 k customers which is 10 percent of how much of the customers you have um done the uh booking right so in in this case for for example uh 10 k even if you put like uh uh, you got profit of like uh, 20 euros for 10k that would be like 200k so 200k would be your profit um, of what you have invested so that x amount of money is what you invest and what you get and in between you have this marketers uh, spending how much effort they put in creating emails and things like that Th those all will have to be add if you want to if you want to calculate the return of investment right so but in in general this is what um we will calculate how many emails you have sent and how much revenue uh, is that made in terms of uh, retail industry right but then uh, when it comes with the b2b industry it's a it's a bit uh, 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 tricky so because you in b2b you 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 um uh, you 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 have to send out an uh, the same email right um and also it will have this open rate let's say you have a lead over here right so initially you have a lead and uh, lead will have an email and email will have a 
click on it so the click has the so basically you may ask like how do you know you you know that 10k customers have made a reservation basically when you when the uh, customer clicks on the link basically you you embed the parameters uh, in that so there are like many uh, companies we use a product called exact tag what it basically does is like you it it creates a wrapper around the link and then uh, it goes into the url and from then it uh, once you go into website it drops a cookie that this customer comes from um, email okay and then from the cookie session it, it stores in your system right so uh, from then on it goes till the the cookie stays till the booking funnel and then once you made the booking uh, it can confirm you the attribute that this customer have made a reservation and then we put take them to the data stream so the same way here also uh, we can do it so let's say a particular lead is their email opens and click so uh, uh, in this case you 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 can there are many tools available so uh, google analytics and uh, 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 data roma and things like that right so so you can use those drop in the cookies into the website and then um, you can uh, you can see whether they have purchased the product or not which is nothing but the opportunity right so um, opportunity and first thing will when you when you want to purchase it will uh, create an account or contact uh, then it drives into the opportunity so in this case uh, you can bring those values of the cookie uh, once you purchase that will in turn create an opportunity and then you will have the opportunity value um, yeah that's how you can able to uh, measure um how much the email have been helped uh, this is the companies which 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 have the perfect um perfect analytics and things like that right but in general uh, for a medium enterprise company or the small enterprise company who doesn't have uh, maybe they will implement utm but i don't think it it takes you to the end end particular page unless you drop in a cookie right but in those scenarios what we general uh, term is like a, a 30 day period right so you send an email uh, of 30 day period and if they clicked on it uh, after 30 days we will see if any opportunity have created or not in between the 30 day period or one week period there could be a lot of thing might have happened salesperson could have called him or some other thing could have happened would have would have also created opportunity but in this case is just an assumption like a seven day period or 30 day period um uh that uh that due to this itself it got created an opportunity like this uh that would be we have to make some assumptions in that case yeah uh does this yeah. help uh, yeah it helps yeah okay. it really helps me okay great uh yeah uh but yeah in some uh, me, small companies uh, we have to go on the assumption but but yeah in, in the companies at the enterprise level uh, there are uh, tracking tools uh, which can be able to help you to um uh, tell the revenue accurately uh, how much has been uh, mm -hmm. sent or not yeah uh, any other question guys if you want to talk over hey um I mean, I have one question, or we came across one use case like uh, uh, we are migrating uh, the data from or the assets from uh, S7 to S12. Uh, the client is in S7 instance. So um, from the mobile push uh, implementation, right, they have a uh, GUID, they are using GUID as a contact key and uh, they wanted to retain that GUID in the S12 instance. So do you have any idea like, you know, uh, any options or 
um, is that I heard there is some options in SDK. Uh, they can reset the key or uh, uh, set the key of using the um, uh, set key method. Yeah, thanks, Venkato, uh, the for asking the question. Like, uh, so in this case, this uh, good ID is is you are setting contact key only if the customer is not signed signed in, right? Like, if if not logged in, right? Are you right? Are, okay. So the again, I think we were proposing uh, if um, basically they are in the V. Suppose if a customer is in V six uh, uh, version, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we uh, our proposal is to uh, force the customer to yeah to update the app. seven yeah yeah um, but uh, uh, the the customer I mean uh, the existing goods uh, how do we uh, retain in S twelve that's the uh, requirement uh, from the customer yeah yeah so so. I think uh, I can think of two ways, right? So w one way is that uh, you uh, you just integrate the push into your new uh, instance, right? Uh, and you are saying uh, this good ID only if you just download it and not when you set you are not setting up while logging in, right? So while logging in, you you will obviously have some sort of customer ID or uh, some some ID would would replace the good id correct correct yeah so so in this case uh uh the easiest way is to just force the app to re-update right uh, they they can they can they, the app team can able to create uh an update version uh like whenever customers just opens the app they can they can always uh, update the app whenever you update the app a new uh good id will will generate in the new instance and then from then on uh the market uh, you can you can market that would be the easiest way uh the second way uh, it supports but uh, there is no guarantee that it works uh basically what we can able to do is you 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 should try to export um the existing uh good id right and uh, uh, you, you should have a mapping to that particular uh, good ID to another uh, good ID. Uh, uh, you, you, you should import that uh, good ID into the mobile push, right? And then, um, yeah, so that should be a mapping, but I don't see a clear view on how you can correlate with this good ID and the new good ID, um, which will be generating yeah yeah we met with uh, salesforce uh, as well um so what they suggested is you can create a custom field um yep. and then store the good in the custom field as a access number um and then uh, when you are uh, basically um my, i mean after migration right so when the uh, user basically launches the app and at the time of registration right so it will switch to that uh, access number which is a GUID, a GUID which uh, we stored it so um, but that switching part right i think uh, um, uh, basically the big bang uh, update uh, they are there's what they're suggesting is uh, it can be done through a mobile push SDK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay. So we uh, so here is where you can create. So you go to this uh, mobile push uh, data right and in the mobile push demographic. So we also uh, create whether that we can, you can create an attribute basically uh, which is uh, the one right and we also create like custom attributes like logged in right and person mm -hmm. id uh, so uh, basically what so similarly you have to create um, let's say uh, let's talk about access token right so in this case we, if we are talking about um access token so 
let's say this would be a new attribute of access token. So there is a so in this case, what we are also setting uh, logged in when you try to log in and when you try to log out, we also set that as false. So when the customer just downloads the app, um, there is a SDK which just uh, triggers, right? At that point, you the app team needs to set out. Uh, mm, there is a function of set attribute in the um, SFMC SDK, right? So in this case, you set the access token which is equal to good ID, which you have it, right? So, so this would be the thing. And then what will happen is like the good ID will get created or it's there already the, for the same good ID. It will, it will, in the new attribute access token, this will also be present right now. Uh, uh, so, so then you have to just export everything, move into uh the new one or um uh and then you can you can just import uh then when you switch off that particular sdk your the sdk team should not generate a good id instead of that you first check whether there is an access token here and if there is an access token use that as a good id instead of um instead of using a new good id but if it's not there then uh, you can generate a good ID, uh, but this is like a complicated uh, way, uh, I think, uh, but it's a sort of a doable way, but, but the easiest way, if you ask me, just mm, create a new app, uh, update, uh, force them to, uh, update the app and, um, yeah, that should create you a new good ID in the new instance and, uh, um, uh, yeah. It, uh, is I don't I don't see uh, a, a metrics or a possible outcome if you want if if you are sending if you are sending uh, communication to the customers who have not uh, signed in uh, right and you want to track those then you keep them out separately so only that will get affected but yeah you we just need to consider but this is a solution um, but it, it could be work but but, but yeah it's kind of a tricky. Yeah. yeah, we were in some discussion actually. Uh, the force upgrade is one option um, yeah. to uh, pass this uh, uh, the existing GUID um, via custom field uh, until he upgrade to um, the new version. Uh, the, I mean, he can't access the app, something uh, we were proposing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. Or else, yeah, we have to go with this custom attribute creation. The problem uh, is that so only, uh, yeah, then every time when the customer opens the app, only this will get populated, right? Uh, the new access token. So you have to give an enough time for the customer to at least open the app once so the SDK initialize and pass the existing GUID to the new attribute called access token. Then from then on, it can continue. Um, but then, um, yeah, these are the edge cases which, which we have to think of. Like what happens if customer didn't open the app for 60 days and 90 days. So in that case, we cannot migrate as well. And then we have to just uh, either we have to let the customer go and uh, whoever is our important audience th for them, we, we whoever is having access token field, then we will just use that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Okay, so if there is no other question, so we can end up our session. Thank you for spending a um, weekend on this, right? Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm stopping the recording.